Hi, uh, thank you for coming. So this is joint work with Jason Klubzowski. Joining, uh, he's joining to, uh, going to join Rutgers as a season professor. Jason cannot make it uh, due to visa issues. Uh, so this talk is about uh, uh, estimating uh, properties of a large graph based on sampled version, in particular counting motifs. And by motifs, I meant induced subgraphs. So uh, let me give you a quick uh, uh, motivation for such problems. Uh, essentially, in practice, most of the graphs such like a massive social network graph uh, is a sample version uh, of the underlying mother graph, which is not observed. What we have access to is only a partial observation. And the goal is to infer about the parent graph based on the sampled uh, uh, version. Okay, so a quick uh, prototypical example is uh, uh, what sociologists do in a field experiment uh, in this particular paper, uh, they uh, were trying to study the social network structure of hunter-gatherer uh, tribes. So what they do is that they have the roster of the entire tribe, about 500 people, and then they just surveyed about 40%, and they asked them to identify their friends in the entire population. And you will see that this is essentially what uh, is uh, uh, done according to a neighborhood sampling mechanism. So, um, and there are many other applications I will not discuss. You can see the paper. Uh, and then th there, are, uh, there, are, there is a suite of different sampling models for uh, large networks. Uh, vertex sampling uh, is, uh, means, uh, uh, and again, even for vertex sampling, meaning the randomness happening at the vertex, uh, there are subgraph sampling in which uh, you sample vertices and you observe induced subgraph. And this is what uh, the previous speaker mentioned. Uh, and then neighborhood sampling is what I just described in the real uh, field experiment where you sample vertices and you observe all their neighbors, not just the ones between them uh, in the entire graph. And then there are uh, equivalently, you can think about sample the genes in matrix in, in rows and also in columns. So there are also random walk based that I will not discuss. And then I want to point out that these more statistical frameworks is different than the query based method. Uh, query-based models or frameworks that are frequently studied in property testing literature in TZS. So uh, just give you a real example. So suppose these are, uh, sorry about that, uh, these are the real uh, parent graph and these uh, one, two, three, four, five sam uh, vertices are sampled and in subgraph uh, sampling you just observe this and then in Naples sampling, of course, you observe much more edges. So it's more uh, informative, as you can imagine. Uh, and then there are various different statistical tasks that you can do. Uh, but for this talk, I will only focus on counting uh, structures in terms of motifs. Um, OK, so uh, as I said, uh, so these are induced subgraph, for example, counting triangles. Uh, and then there are several questions we want to understand theoretically. Uh, for example, de de determine the sample complexity uh, in, in a suitable uh, mathematical framework. And in particular, if you want to count uh, triangles or open triangles, does it mean you need the same uh, number of samples? So it's not so clear from uh, a priori. And also, how much more information does neighborhood sampling give you? Uh, and I'll not assume g any generative models like stochastic block models, and then the graph will be worst case, and the randomness is from the sampling mechanism. So the mathematically, you have a simple undirected graph with capital N vertices, and then uh, that they are. So I will just focus on Bernoulli sampling for this the ten minutes introduction. Uh, for each vertex, you flip a coin with uh, bias P. And for all those heads, you, uh, those are the vertices you sampled. And then they are binomially distributed, roughly speaking, P times N on average. And you observe uh, either uh, induced subgraph, the random uh, uh, graph called G tilde, or uh, the neighborhood sampling model, you observe essentially union of stars with the center of the stars colored. Okay, so the union of the neighborhood. Uh, okay, so the goal is to estimate number of given motifs. I will denote by little h. So this is an induced subgraph. For example, a clique of size three or four, uh, and then mathematically it's just a summation of indicators where this just means these are isomorphic, uh, and then I will denote s by that. Okay, so. Um, so sample complexity, meaning that uh, given a class of graphs defined uh, in this talk, 
in this work by uh, the maximum degree, uh, what is the minimum number of sampling ratios that you can uh, estimate uh, the number of uh, given motifs up to a plus minus uh, epsilon uh, uh, multiplicatively. Okay, and the key question we're interested in is, uh, is, sublinear, is sublinearity possible, meaning that is it possible to only observe a vanishing fraction of the vertices? So, okay, so, and then uh, I'll skip this, uh, sorry about that. And then essentially in these statistical frameworks, there's very few results uh, previously uh, where essentially the only thing that uh, people have computed are unbiased estimators and then for some other stuff, for kinetic components, the more global structures. Uh, okay, so I would uh, give you a, a qu quick uh, t summary of the main results. Um, so let's say you want to count edges based on sampled version. And let's say you have a graph with at least m edges. And then the maximum degree is d. d, d does not need to be a constant, uh, it's whatever. So you, the optimal sample complexity is a function of uh, number of edges, and then epsilon, the accuracy, and also the degree. And this given by this formula, if you only do subgraph sampling. And then uh, if you do neighbor sampling, which is uh, more informative, and then the maximum becomes the mean. And you can prove uh, you, uh, th these can be easily achieved, and these are optimal in the worst case. Uh, in other words, you can construct graphs which you cannot beat these results. Uh, and then for uh, general motifs, if I give you a, a subgraph with k vertices, and then there is an extension of these results, uh, I'll not read it, uh, I can explain to you in details at the poster. And these are essentially optimal for connected, uh, uh, any connected uh, uh, subgraphs, if you want to count those. Uh, and only depend on the size, in fact, which is k, and not on the actual topology it's for open triangle and closed triangle. In the worst case, it's exactly the same. And then for neighbor sampling, uh, we get uh, different results, which is not just replacing max by min. It's more subtle than that. And then it's optimal again for connected graphs, but only in special cases because the, the, the lower bound construction, as you will see in the paper, is, is, uh, is the, the main hard part. And this we can only prove for vertices up to uh, four vertices or for cliques or even for cycles that you can prove it. Okay, so let me tell you very quickly the estimator. And it's, it's very primitive, uh, it's very it's simple actually. Essentially it's the, the obvious thing that you would do, at least in subgraph case. Let's say you want to count triangles and there's a, heuris and there's a heuristics in statistics called Horvitz-Thompson, which is means if you sample a bunch of things and you want to count for the fact that uh, these are obs the observation happens with probability p, then you just divide by that, okay, to make it uh, obviously unbiased. And that's what you do. And then you just take the obs observed number of the edges and divide by p square. Because if you want to see an edge, in a subgraph sampling model, both n need to be sampled. So then you do this, you do the analysis, and then it turns out to be optimal. Of course, establishing the optimality is hard. It's not very easy. Uh, okay, and then maybe a little bit surprisingly is that for neighbor sampling, such a principle of uh, just uh, adjust for the sampling uh, probabilities is not optimal. Uh, so you can do the same thing, but then because of high correlations in the neighbor sampling model where uh, uh, and yeah, in the essentially when degree is large, this is not going to, this can be improved by what? Well, so essentially the important thing that you should account, uh, you should take into account is the color information. So there are two types of edges that you can observe. If you observe, uh, uh, if you sample one, then the, uh, the edge is also observed. And there are, there are essentially correlations between these type of uh, random variables that you can kill if you, if you, um, if you weight them differently, and then you can weigh them in such a way that you actually negatively weight the, uh, the, this sort of edge count so that the variance becomes stabilized. So it's a little bit counterintuitive because we are actually removing edges of a different type. So you can do the same thing for, motifs, for other motifs. For example, for this diamond, there are three different things you can observe, and you can weight them in such a way that uh, the uh, is still unbiased, but the variance becomes much better. And this turns out seems to be optimal, uh, at least for small subgraphs. So the lower bounds is uh, established by the following idea. So essentially, th there is a recipe that you can uh, construct. If I give you a pair of graphs with, uh, whose, 
whose total variation distance of their sampled version is small, they can create a lower bound for bigger graphs by uh, making a lot of copies of these things. So, so I will not explain the details. Uh, and then the, how to get uh, small subgraphs whose sampled version is close in, in total variation distance. So there is uh, one method based on coupling. But the one I want to highlight is a construction which is akin to the method of moments by matching small subgraphs. So, so uh, OK, I don't think I have time to go through the details. But essentially, these objects either can be constructed by hand or by existential argument uh, in the graph theoretical literature. So should I, should I end yeah, now? Huh? OK, uh, all you're right. You're so basically out of time. Yeah, all right. So uh, thank you very much. Thanks. Again, looks like.